Yes, this is possible in SteamAge. Who needs a BBF? So, a couple months ago, I made a guide on Thorncraft Nugget Duping. Go watch it after this if you haven't seen it already. It will be a really good follow up later in the tiers. This video showcases a more optimized method of duping and a way to utilize this easily enough in SteamAge, and I am hoping to make it accessible to anyone, particularly those who have never tried magic before. Steel transmutation is often overlooked, well, as it should be as it's kind of useless after your first EBF. However, having magic before then makes it a whole lot more feasible and is super useful down the track. 4 BBFs only produce 1 steel per minute, however with this method it is much faster and super easy to source materials, and has been developed to be used in GTNH speedruns. The only downside I would say it has is having to do the magic, which this guide will carry you through entirely, and a little bit of manual work to it, but it is certainly not as tedious as crafting a BBF in my opinion. You may have seen me reveal it in my latest episode of Project Singularity and I thought I would make a proper tutorial so you guys can follow along. I see a lot of people going back to try and do it and ask me questions in my discord, so why not make a definite answer for all? So how do you actually perform this madness? Well there are a few problems to solve, and my good friend Neko Nu, yes again, helped me figure them out. Three main issues are presented in obtaining and utilizing magic in Steam Age. Let's go through them. The first is getting an actual wand without going to the Twilight Forest. The second, obtaining aspects without the thermometer, since you can't craft it, to perform research. And the last being to actually getting the magical metallurgy research without scanning an iron ingot. Yes, this is an actual tough one you probably didn't even know was a requirement, but let's go through them chronologically for the players who aren't so familiar and how to perform each step. It's honestly quite easy once you know how to do it, just like most things in GTNH. Once, obtaining a wand in Steam Age is fairly easy. There are two known methods, the first being with villagers, and the second being with a thaumaturge peck but I highly recommend the villager route because you will need them for something else later down the line, so we will just be going with that method. There is a villager called a heretic who fairly often sells a wand as their first trade, and they can be spotted in reddish clothing. You will want to breed villagers until you spot this guy for the profane wand. Setting up a villager breeder is very easy, I'll show you the minimum setup you need to keep them breeding indefinitely. Just make sure you check it every so often because you don't want thousands of villagers constantly breeding as it may lag your world out. So first, you want a platform on the ground. Keep it on the same level if possible, it just makes things easier. Leave two villagers on that platform. Then build seven blocks up, place a villager on top of those seven blocks, break the blocks underneath it, and place six doors on that same level as that top villager. And there, that is literally all you need for a villager breeder. Just make sure it's lit up and no mobs can get to it. If you are making this in a village, make sure there are no other doors nearby and kill other villagers that could potentially be above the Y level of your base platform. Now all you need to do is wait until you get that heretic villager you desire. They shouldn't be too rare and you can normally get one within 1-2 to two hours of this villager breeder being loaded since babies should become exponential. Because we are still in 1.7.10, villager mechanics are old. To unlock the next trade or refresh a previous one, you need to make a trade for the last item in the villager's GUI. This should allow you to obtain more wands as necessary, and honestly, I think you should. Another note I should mention is that the wand you are trading for is called a profane one for a reason. These come pre-charged to 50 viz capacity, and have a mechanic called contract. If you craft something with the wand and you use some of its viz, it will try to fill the viz back up by giving you normal warp in return when it is put back in your inventory. Each profane wand has 25,000 contract and once it's drained it acts as a normal 50 capacity wand. You can bypass this contract by trading for many wands and just treating them as disposable ones. Just press Q on it when you're finished in the arcane table to void it so you don't get any warp. The total warp you get for draining all contract is around 20. So it's not too much of a concern, and I normally drain at least one. 50 Fizz 1 is a pecking good start, and you can even replace its components now. But for this nugget transmutation, you won't be draining any viz as you're not required to craft anything. Just a note of warning for later if you continue to use this wand. Obtaining aspects and research. So one more thing you are going to need will be 9 knowledge fragments. There are several ways to obtain this. Through Thorncraft loot bags, random chests specifically in dungeons, strongholds, and the villager thorn buildings. But using the wizard villager is generally the easiest since you are going to have so many of them already. 
there are typically two different trades for them, and you should be able to obtain them quite easily, one being four books for a knowledge fragment, and the other being one emerald also for a knowledge fragment. Now trade for at least nine of them. After obtaining them, spread out a grid in a workbench full of them for a random research note. Do not do anything with this just yet, I will explain it in a moment. Any excess fragments you can obtain, the better. Right click them and you will gain some more research points, but this is not required, just helpful if you want to continue your journey with Steam Age Magic. After obtaining the wand and your knowledge fragments, you are almost set up. You can start pre-crafting all of your magic equipment. If you are new to magic, don't worry, I will explain exactly what you need. With your wand, right click a bookshelf for a Thormonomicon. This will contain all the research entries you need. Craft a paperbark sapling and bone meal for some for some paper. Craft up some scribing tools, generally two sets are preferred as you can keep one in your workbench. Craft three Thormcraft tables, right click your wand in one and scribing tools in another. And voila, you are all set up and ready to begin the research. Congrats if this is your first time doing Thorm. I hope I triggered your interest. Okay, so now for the absolutely esoteric knowledge I have been hiding from you all. These research notes are normally random and meant to give you a research that doesn't have any prerequisites and is just from a set list. But what if I told you that they are not, in fact, random and can be perfectly predicted? <laughs> How balanced? The one we are looking for in particular is metallurgical perfection as mentioned before. You are normally required to have a thermometer to scan an iron ingot before this point. In Steam Age, the Thormometer is possible, but only with a rare chance of a Nova Stormcraft loot bag. You can't craft them normally in Steam Age, but this strategy bypasses this requirement entirely. Looking into the game code, we find that the actual research you get from this note is determined by the time of day. Like, who even thought of this? This is the funniest random function I have ever seen. So we are able to reverse engineer the game code and search for the particular times that you can get this research on the day without having to waste more knowledge fragments. So using the JavaScript code pin in the comments, copy it, press F12 on a browser of your choice and just change out the year and day variables and run the code. An alternative of this was put together by book on my Discord so you can run the code without having to do any of these browser shenanigans. There will be a link in the comments where you can run this on the website itself and swap out the variables. This will just do it for you and you can just read the times on there. Now just right click the research page at the closest specified time that the code outputs, and this should yield the metallurgical perfection research that is required. Time for the fun part, the actual research. Right click the research table you made earlier, so you can see all the aspects on both sides. We will need to combine these to discover new aspects. Follow these steps very carefully as if you make a mistake it can be a bit annoying to try to get more aspects if you run out, and you didn't obtain any more knowledge fragments. There are ways to get more, but I will assume that you are capable of not screwing this step up. Pay attention. <laughs> the following aspects here are just given to you by default, and it happens to be enough to do all the research that you need for nugget transmutation. To obtain more various aspects, you can combine them in the research table. Now follow carefully so you can do all these combinations. I will provide a list on screen of which aspects you will need. You may need to combine some of these more or less times than listed but this is every one you will need. Just refer back to here if you need it more and recombine them. Okay, so for the first research, we will start on metallurgical perfection. I will put up pictures of solved researches and you can solve them as similarly as possible. Each note may be ever so slightly different with a blank hexagon blocking the path. So you may need to use an extra point or two, but they should all generally follow the same structure. Congratulations, you are all set up. Okay, now for the duping side of things. This is the easy part. So if you watched my other video, Nugget Duping, you may recognize some of it, but I actually found a much more consistent way and more optimized way to do it. Craft a cauldron and right click with your wand. This will turn it into a crucible. 
In SteamAge, make a water tank in a fairly high humidity biome. Doesn't matter too much, but you will want a fairly large buffer of water depending on how crazy you go with the transmutation. Place the crucible one block away from the tank and put down some netherrack with a fire on top of it just below the crucible. So if you didn't know already, flux generates when you put too much in a cauldron, but in GTNH it can be completely blocked by placing blocks or forge micro blocks on every side. This will completely nullify any drawbacks of a cauldron, so let's set this up. First put three wooden pipes into the back and sides of the cauldron, then absolutely smother the living daylights of every side and vertice with blocks. What I like to do is put a pressure plate and trapdoor on top of the crucible as well, then position two drawers over it, like this. Now time for the dupe. So in any eye, you can see that an iron nugget to steel nugget recipe just requires one auto. Well, there is a super easy way to obtaining auto. This strategy is just completely niche and just absolutely big brain. I honestly don't know how I work sometimes. And it involves something called that lava charm no one has ever found use for. <laughs> well, until now. Save a modifier slot on your hammer and just equip this charm instead. It auto smelts everything you mine. But it's currently bugged and won't smelt Greg Tech ores. Luckily, that actually works in our favor. We still get our raw GT ores fortunes, and we get smooth stone instead of cobblestone. Perfect! Now you're wondering why we want stone. Well, stone on itself does not contain any auto. But if you chisel it to the chiseled stone brick variant, it will contain exactly one auto. How wonderful. Now that is effectively one stone for one steel nugget. And if you put that into perspective, one swing of your hammer for one steel ingot. Crazy, right? So let's go mine endless stone. Once you have a whole bunch of stone, chisel it and place it into a drawer. Now craft a million saws. You can just batch craft the blades as these take up no inventory space and keep the blades and sticks nearby. Now use them to make a crap ton of iron nuggets. Okay, time for the real magic. Some of you may hate duping because of all the weird loss mechanics involved, but I have finally sorted and ironed those issues out once and for all. Items tend to just get lost when you run out of water, and this can particularly happen when you dump many items in at once. So if you had a way to somehow spam items one by one really fast, you can bypass this and make your duping incredibly consistent with very little loss. So what you want to do is dump all this stone in, all of it. You can empty out the drawer like this so it doesn't kill your inventory and go straight in. Once that's all done, grab some iron nuggets and fill your hotbar. Now go to hotbar 1 and hold down Q. What this will do is drop items down one by one in succession really really fast. Now keep doing this for your whole hotbar and place it back into the drawer. Just keep doing this over and over and you will see the real power of this method. Dump the excess steel nuggets into another drawer and go for round 2 until your essential runs out in your crucible. You will know when it stops dropping steel as the iron will try to dupe itself. The loss is very very negligible for how much you dupe and how cheap these resources are. And in this scenario, also relevant to most of GT and H, time is much more valued than resource efficiency. Another good item to use are rounds, particularly iron, which contain 3 auto each. But this kind of gets good at the lathe, and by that point you could just auto chisel and rock break a stone anyway. Nether stone is also another good option containing 2 auto each and is very cheap to make. Just thought I would mention these two in case the devs decide to go rampant and nerf this method, but I seriously doubt it. And finally, to convert the nuggets back into ingots, in my opinion the smeltery is much better than the alloy smelter. However, if you have the fuser, the multi-block alloy smelter, then probably go for that as I assume you have tons of steam production. In the smeltery, I like to make it super tall with a ton of parallels, so then you can just pump out the fluid into lots of ingot molds and parallel smelting all at once. You can scale a smeltery very easily by melting down large stone plates and turning it into seared stone. A tinker's chisel can be used to cycle it back into brick form and then hammer those into actual bricks to craft various components. This method can be even faster to get than crafting the actual BBF just because of how insane villagers breed in this version, and in my opinion is much more fun and rewarding when you do it in this way. 
Share this guide around and spread the love of magic. I promise it's not as bad as some of you may think. Later on, this transmutation research lets you advance into your higher tier medals, which you can go see how to do on my other nugget duping tutorial. Anyways, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I put in a lot of effort into coming up with the strategy and making it viable and producing this video, and I'm really proud of how the approach came out. Hopefully it's clear enough and accessible to all you folks. Peace.